Hello friends, welcome. In my previous video, I had discussed the Incoterms. Incoterms are the rules which are published by the International Chamber of Commerce specifying the responsibility of buyers and sellers regarding the delivery of goods. I had mentioned the name of 11 Incoterms and in this video, I am going to explain the 11 Incoterms in a way that will be very easy to understand and remember. So let's get started. The first seven INCO terms which I am going to discuss is applicable to multimodal transport. So these seven INCO terms apply to multiple means of transportation of goods. To make you understand better, let me start with a story where you are the seller and you are selling toys for your company. So throughout this video, when I say you, it would mean that you as a seller. Now your toys are really good and you often get orders from other countries. The problem is how you get the toys to the buyers and thus there are different sorts of agreements and terms involved. So starting with the first term that you may use is the X works. In this term, you who is a seller will make the goods available at your premises. You will tell the buyer, here are the goods, please come here and take it. So as per this clause, the buyer is responsible for all transportation cost risks involved and he takes the responsibility of export clearance in case he's from the other country. And the way to remember is thinking how would your ex work? So once somebody is your ex, of course they will not work for you. So if you ask your ex for something, they will say if you want this, you come and take it. I will not do any favor for you anymore. I will not take any responsibility. So, you are the ex in the story, not willing to do any favor to the buyer. Now the second clause is FCA, which stands for free carrier. In this, you ask the buyer that, you know, what I'll do is, I will bring the toys to a certain place. It could be a dock, terminal or just to the warehouse of the carrier that has been chosen by you. And I will hand over the item to the carrier and it will be your responsibility from that point onwards. So in the free carrier clause, seller is responsible only to hand over the goods to the carrier who the buyer has selected. And the way to remember this clause is that as a seller, you would be free after handing over the goods to the carrier and you have no responsibility after that. And I want you to notice as I continue with these terms, basically with each sequence clause, the responsibility of seller is slowly increasing and the responsibility of the buyer is reducing. So it's like you try to sell your product using the X works because it's easiest for you. But then the buyer says, no, I'll not accept this. Then you move on to the next one. Okay, okay, I'll get it to the carrier. And he may still say, no, 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 you do more than that. Then you come to the next point which is this time you tell the buyer how about CPT which stands for carriage paid to. What I'll do in this is I will bring the toys to the carrier, pay them whatever their freight is. Once they are on the ship, then they are your responsibility. So in CPT, in addition to just handing over the goods to the carrier, you're also paying the freight to the carrier. And the way to remember is carriage paid to basically all the clauses are mentioning your responsibility as a seller. So carriage paid to means a seller is paying the carriage and then he's free. And let's say even now the buyer says no, I do not accept this term. I will not take responsibility even after it is loaded on the ship, rail, truck or plane or whatever the case may be. Then comes the next term which is CIP. It stands for carriage and insurance paid to. And then you tell your buyer, okay. What I'll do is I'll bring the toys to the carrier. I will pay him the freight. I will also make sure that insurance is bought by me so that if anything happens on the way, it will be covered by insurance. Then are you ready to accept the offer? And let's say the buyer again says, no, not acceptable. I want a better term. Then you may say, okay, what about DAP, which stands for delivered at place. In this, you as a seller, deliver the goods to the buyer at an agreed upon place in the destination country. The seller is responsible for all costs 
and risks until the goods are ready for unloading by the buyer once the goods reach the destination country buyer takes care of unloading custom clearance and any local delivery and listening to this the buyer may again say no this is too much i want a better term then you may offer dpu delivered at place unloaded this term is new in incoterm 2020 which has replaced the dat delivered at terminal from the 2010 version dpu means the seller is responsible for delivering the goods unloaded to the named place of destination the seller bears all the risks and cost involved until unloading at the destination only thing buyer has to do is pay taxes as needed and take the goods to his place and let's say even now the buyer goes this is not good enough i want the best offer then you give him the final offer clause 7 which is ddp which stands for delivered duty paid in this you will be responsible for delivering the goods to the named place in the buyer's country cleared for transport paying all duties and taxes the buyer is only responsible for unloading of the goods when delivered to his place the buyer's responsibility for unloading the goods here refers to the physical act of removing the goods from the delivery vehicle or container once they have arrived at the designated place of delivery so the last clause is almost like delivering at the person's doorstep all he has to do is remove it from the delivery vehicle and take responsibility for that so these seven clauses covered the multimodal transportation and now i'm coming to the last four points of the inco terms which basically cover the means of transportation by sea and inland waterway transport the first point is fas which stands for free alongside ship so in this the seller is free after he delivers the goods alongside the vessel at a named port of shipment the buyer is responsible for the main carriage freight cost and risk from this point so similar to the first seven clauses each clause is basically covering the responsibility of a seller so in this first one the seller will be free after he has delivered the goods alongside a ship the seller is not responsible for any freight or risks involved and then the buyer may again say no i don't like this clause give me a better one and then again as a seller you may say okay fob free on board which basically means that the seller will be free after the goods have been delivered on board the ship so the seller delivers the goods on board the vessel nominated by the buyer at the named port of shipment the seller pays for the loading of goods on board and the buyer is responsible for main carriage and freight cost and the risk from this point so as soon as the goods are on board the responsibility lies on the buyer and let's say the buyer again says no you give me a better offer and then you may offer him the next clause which is cfr which stands for cost and freight the seller delivers the goods on board the vessel or procures the goods already so delivered the seller pays the cost and freight necessary to bring the goods to the named port of destination so this clause is pretty straightforward the seller delivers the goods on board he has paid for the cost involved in bringing the goods there putting it on board the ship and he has also paid for the freight so that the goods can reach the named port of destination and the buyer may say you know i want even a better offer than this and you may say okay the final in this case is cif which is cost insurance and freight in addition to what i have already offered you i will pay for the insurance also so similar to cfr but the seller also has to procure marine insurance against buyer's risk of loss or damage to the goods during the carriage so these were the 11 inco terms which are commonly used in transportation of goods for import and export purpose and for multimodal transport i hope it was a useful video for you and it clarifies all these clauses are basically covering the responsibility of a seller so i hope this was a useful video for you if you have any feedback suggestion or comment then please do write down below all the best for your career and exams and as always thank you for watching